Get ready to engage your unified action partners. I want you to think long and hard about engaging your unified action partners because you're going to do a good bit of this in the future. I want you to think long and hard as leaders about engaging your unified action partners. I want you to think about the handshake as much as the hand grenade. And I want you to think about how you're going to get your foot in the door without blowing the hinges off of it. Seeing yourself culturally, being self-aware is step one toward better understanding your unified action partners. You've got to know yourself. We're going to begin with an activity that's kind of centered on better knowing yourself. Sir, what is your name? Uh, my name is Rafik. And that's an interesting name, but everybody's name is interesting, and everybody's name has a story associated with it. And you should be asking yourself this as you engage your unified action partners. Rafik, what is the story behind your name? Um, Rafik is an uh, Arabic name. Uh, it means friend or companion, unlike the movie where Rafiq was a blue butt monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you. We also identify along multiple lines. You may not think of it this way, but you have multiple identities along personal, professional, familial kinds of lines. Every one of us. Rafiq, would you share with us your multiple identities? Yes, being born in Morocco, uh, you're exposed to many identities. So I am Arab from my father, uh, from my mother, uh, Berber from my father, African by location, Arabic or Arab by language, uh, and also Mediterranean, uh, again, by location. I have multiple identities. Not personality. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And Rafiq, you shared with us that you were from Morocco. Could you tell us a little bit more about where you're from and how those people view the world? Uh, Morocco, because of its location, has been uh, the bridge. And people see themselves as the bridge between the West and the East. One, because of the ethnicities multiple ethnicities, and also because of the many languages that they will speak, Arabic, Berber, French, Spanish, Portuguese, English. Uh, so that's uh, how they see themselves. Thank you. Really appreciate you sharing with the group. Don't you think that if I was engaging Rafiq in an operational environment, I'd be a lot better at building rapport and maybe even shaping and influencing Rafiq if I knew that whole backstory, so to speak? Yeah, these are things we should be thinking about as leaders. Rafiq also mentioned that he spoke Arabic. Language is a strong driver of identity in some parts of the world. Think about Arabic, the language of the Quran. Very powerful. This even creates schisms in the Muslim world between Arabic speakers and non-Arabic speakers. Ethnicity is also a really strong driver of identity. We've been reading a lot in the paper lately about the Kurds. Some of you might have worked with the Kurds in northern Iraq. The Kurds identify very strongly along ethnic lines. While the majority of them are Sunni Muslims, they do identify strongest as Kurds and with their unique language. Something to consider. People will absolutely act and interact differently, driven by their identities. Think about it. You act one way at home. You act another way as a soldier on the job. Maybe you act a different way in the deployed environment. Maybe you act a different way as a coach in your town. You act a different way as a wife. These are examples of identities driving your behavior. I once heard this story about a young U.S. Army officer. He was stationed in Central America. He lived on a small remote outpost with his Central American counterparts. He was doing everything he could to work by, with, and through his unified action partners. But at the end of the day, he was really struggling. 
He felt like he couldn't shape and influence the environment until it struck him that both him and his counterpart identified really strongly as soccer players. And this young army officer discovered that he could get a lot more work done on the soccer pitch than in the staff meeting. That's a really good example of an adaptive leader. This is the way we want all of our leaders thinking. Some of our unified action partners, they will see life 180 degrees out from you. Think for a moment about this simple cartoon. Why do you think that fish is swimming alone and out in front? Anybody care to hazard a guess? Yes, Sergeant. Sir, I'd say she's out front because she's in charge of the group. She's the leader. Yes, very good. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Chief. Sir, because it's the strongest fish in the group. Excellent responses. But you know what? Those are typical American responses. When we show this simple cartoon to the same demographic on the other side of the world, maybe in an Asian culture, they say things like, oh, that fish out in the front. That's the weak fish. That's the fish that doesn't fit in. That's the fish that's been cut out. That's the fish that wants to get back in with the collective. These are good examples of how cultures might see the world 180 degrees from us. Something to consider as a leader getting ready to engage your unified action partner. As leaders, we've got to absolutely leverage our understanding of names and the stories behind names, identities, worldview, narratives. These are really powerful concepts and will go a long way toward building rapport and shaping as well as influencing events and activities in our environment. So it's time for you as leaders to get ready to engage your unified action partner. Thank you.